Hey guys, welcome back to the Godot Space Side Scrollers tutorial series. This is tutorial number 10 in the series, and in this tutorial we are going to be going over parallax backgrounds. And this is going to kind of give a sense of movement, kind of like throughout the game. So we're going to have like the stars moving towards the player, it just gives more like, yeah, as I said, sense of movement. And it also looks like you're more in space. Higher than the perp and just like endless purple. So, um, we'll be going over that. Um, go down in the description if you don't have your parallax backgrounds. You can go download the assets in the my Google Drive link. If you have your own assets, you can use those as well. They just might how you might have to tweak some stuff. So, I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it backgrounds. Right here, backgrounds. I'm gonna import all of our backgrounds into this folder. So I'm gonna open my folder where I stored it all. I stored it in my Samsung Drive. Let's see, background. Okay, so it should all be in this background folder and I'm just gonna drag these onto this folder. And that did not work. So um, I'm just gonna select these all holding shift and I'll drag them into my backgrounds folder there we go so now they're all in here so all of our backgrounds are all gonna be under the canvas layer just remember that because if you don't have them under the canvas layer it's probably not gonna work I haven't tested it out without the canvas layer but it's kind of a needed thing so I'm just gonna do our parallax background node you want to do the canvas layer one first right here and under this one you want to add a child node the parallax layer it has to be set up in this sort of way or else it won't work I'm gonna rename this one star background one so as you can see we have our parallax layer under and I'm gonna add a child node under that layer as a sprite so now we can import our parallax background one as the texture for the sprite. So I'm just going to drag it right into this texture right here. So there we go. We got our parallax background all set up. But the only issues we're having here is it's not centered. And to do this, we can go into the inspector of the sprite, go down here to offset. Instead of centered, you want to turn this off so it's not centered and it's in the corner. So now you can see it fills up from the corner all the way to this corner, either from starting and filling to the, from the middle and outward. So this will fit our game a lot nicer than the other methods. So now we have our sprite in here. Let's create our script to make the, the background move towards the player. And I do have other backgrounds. You can see I have star background one, two, and three. Reason why is because we're gonna have multiple backgrounds moving at different speeds, and it's gonna give this like kind of cool looking 3D effect on like parallax kind of looking thing. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I am going to attach, I did not mean to rename that. I am going to attach a script to this star background one right here. Press the attach script button right here and let's see we want to set the path we don't want it in our world right here so i'm gonna press this up arrow right here i'm gonna set the path to ui actually not to ui backgrounds there we go and instead of star background one this is gonna be a script used by all the parallax backgrounds so we're just gonna call this Phil, let me backspace it. Parallax background background dot gd. And I can press create. So now there's a function in Godot called set scroll offset. And we're gonna use that to make it um, move. So um, that's what we're going to be doing to get this to move towards the player. And let's see. We'll do this 
We're gonna set up some variables first. So I'm gonna do export integer variable speed. So only reason why I'm using export and integer right here is as you can see, now I've saved it. I'm gonna click on my star background. You can see in the script variables, now we have a speed right here. That export thing does, what it does is it just gives you that script variable up in the inspector so you can edit it within the without going into the code which is nice when you're having multiple objects using the same code but you want to move at different speeds and you can see why I did integer if you try to type in like text like let's say um, something like that and then you press enter it won't let you put that in and if I try to do 1.2 it won't let you do that either reason being it has to be an integer so it can't be a string and it can't be a scene or it can't be a um, float number which has a decimal point in it so it has to be an integer um, so this is makes it easy so we can set it all up and to, inside the inspector so that's basically what this does I'm just gonna set a variable called scroll I'm actually gonna just call it offset scroll and I'm gonna set this equal to zero for now function underscore process now what we're gonna do to this is we're gonna set offset scroll um, plus equals speed times delta reason why we're timesing it by delta again is so it runs at the same speed on all computers and instead instead yeah it just runs at so it moves the same speed on all computers because if you didn't do delta it would run faster on the fastest computers and slower on the slowest because it's running on the fastest the computer can compute it so make sure you times it by delta so it runs the same speed for every computer now we're going to use our built-in function called set scroll offset this is going to make it move so now we're going to do our vector 2 which contains an x and a y value and we're going to use offset scroll as our x and our y equal to zero and i'm going to put neg oh i did not mean to move that i'm going to put negative right here reason why is negative will make it move left and the player's moving forward this player's moving right so the background should be moving left so that's why i'm putting negative right there and that should get it moving and offset scroll just has to add to the speed times delta for it to actually keep moving because if you just set equal to speed times delta it will move to that exact position that you set that speed to either than keep moving so you just have to keep adding to it that's the only reason why we're adding and saying as an extra variable so now i'm going to hit back to 2d and let's press the play button oh i set my speed to one um yeah make sure you set your speed i'm gonna set to like 65 or something and this should be pretty fast yeah so you can see those oh but they stopped you see it's not infinite it's just it completely it was going and then it stopped so to make it infinite what you need to do is select your parallax layer and no it might be star background hmm, maybe not i am going crazy maybe it's in here these are so similar oh yeah in motion so go to the parallax layer select that go into motion and set mirroring equal to 160. <coughs> so if you guys are using your own assets or you're not um using the same window size you need to make sure that this is the same value right here as the width of your window so let's i'll show you guys so if you go to project settings window, you see my width is 160. It needs to be that same width so it keeps mirroring the entire screen, screen's width. And you see it'll only mirror twice. That's just in the editor, it actually mirrors infinitely when it's playing. But 
I can show you guys right now that when I run it, that will go on forever now. It doesn't ever end. So there we go. We got one background in and it looks okay, but it will look a lot better with multiple backgrounds moving at different speeds. And I did not exit. I'm just going to press the stop button. So to do that, they're basically structured the exact same way. It's just the sprites different and the speeds different. So there's no really reason to just keep, um, I'm going to show you guys an easy way of manipulating values in the scene, but reusing that scene in all of its code. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select this, um, star background one right here. Make sure this is the white node, not the blue one and right click it. And you want to do make scene root. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Don't do that. Never mind. Um, yeah, don't do make scene root. That was a bad idea. I'm um, sorry about that. You want to do save branch as a scene. I, I saw scene and I immediately clicked on it. That was, that was not good. Yeah, save branch as scene right here. And this will save it as its own scene. I'm going to save it in the backgrounds folder. And I'm going to press save. So now you can see that it has a little scene icon right here. We can click on that now. We have it as its own scene right here. And so you're probably thinking, how do we make multiple scenes that are the same scene, but we can just change the values? Well, there's a thing called inherited scene in Godot. So what you can do is go back to your star background scene right here. And up here at the top, you want to go scene. You want to do new inherited scene. And this will, we're going to select the scene that we want to inherit from, which is background one, and we press open. You can see these values are now grayed out, and it says unsaved down here. So this is like duplicating a scene, but still you reusing lots of the stuff from the old scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this to star background two. Now I'm going to press control S to save, and now I can save that. You see, now they're, this one is the parent one, and now this is the child of that. And it's reusing lots of the same stuff. So now instead of 65, I can go like 45 or something like that. I did not, 45, there we go. And now I go over to my sprite at the bottom, and I'm gonna drag star background two into here, and that did not work. Oh crap, what did I do? Okay, undo that. Um, I don't know what happened there. Just drag this all the way to the texture right here. There we go. And now we have that texture in here. So now I can resave that. And I'm going to go back over to my world. And I'm going to select the canvas layer. And I'm going to press this little thing. This like link right here to instance in our scene. Make sure canvas layer is selected and do background too and press open. And you can just drag it from the editor and then drag it on top of canvas layer, or you could do the error method. But now you can see we have the multiple scenes in here. So now when I press play, they're moving at different speeds. That looks pretty cool. But it looks like we are, we're gonna add one more background to um, kind of make it look even better. So that's what it looks like so far. Um, we're going to be using lots of inherited scenes with the enemies is we're going to make a def we're going to make like a enemy class object, and then we're going to make inherited scenes of that enemy to make lots of new enemies. And then we're going to go over how to create it, set the spawner to make multiple, make these new enemies that we've set up. So that's what we're going to be doing in the future too. Um, I'm going to make a new inherited scene for the star background. So again, back up the scene at the top, new inherited scene, select star background one. New, we have a new one now. I'm going to rename this to star background three. And what do we do for the speed right here? 45. I'm probably going to go like 25 or something. Something pretty noticeable. And in the sprite, I'm gonna drag background three in here. 
Now I'm gonna save it, start back around three, save, go back over to world, and I'm gonna drag star back around three under the canvas layer to instance it. And I'm gonna press play. There we go, that looks awesome. So we have all these different backgrounds moving. And you can adjust the values because it kind of looks a bit weird because the enemies are not moving as fast as some of the stars. But for right now, I'm just going to leave at these values. You guys can change them if you want. But that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you guys like this tutorial. And yeah, I, I'm hoping you guys have learned something new. And um, I'm probably going to have a couple extra videos in this series. But we're kind of getting close to an end of the series but it's been it's been good so far i've been enjoying all the um all the stuff on uh youtube you guys have been doing recently with all the subs and stuff so that's definitely helps me motivate me to do a lot more of these i'm probably going to be doing a lot more videos in the future but that's basically it for this one so see you guys i hope you guys learned something